How does a bulletproof vest work? In many ways, the idea of bulletproofing is older than bullets. The notion that you could protect yourself against your enemy's weapons goes all the way back to the plate armour and chainmail of the medieval knights. Further back than that, in fact, it goes back to the leather armour of Roman soldiers. All this stuff was quite good against swords and battle axes. Trouble was, as weapons became more powerful and more accurate, so armour had to become tougher, and that meant heavier. By the time the first gunpowder muskets had reached Europe, it had all got a bit out of hand, and the average weight of armour went up from 15 kilograms in the 15th century to something like 25 kilograms by the late 16th century. Eventually, we arrive in the late 19th century and the homemade armour used by Ned Kelly and his gang. Each suit weighed around 45 kilograms, which means that one outlaw's energy was almost entirely consumed humping his own protective kit around. None of it left for robbing. Bulletproofing didn't need to be heavier, it actually needed to be a bit cleverer. In fact, it needed to be softer. A bit of physics. A bullet works by concentrating a great deal of energy, all the energy from its speed and its momentum, into a very small point. That's why it can punch its way through apparently impenetrable surfaces, like brick walls. And yet, remarkably, you can stop one with fabric. This was worked out by some Koreans in the 1860s who realised that you had to increase the area that the bullet works against. Bullets intended for soft targets, such as animals and indeed Korean soldiers, work by deforming on impact. This increases the bullet's area and allows it to do more damage. But it's also the bullet's weakness, as the Koreans worked out whilst being shot at by the French. They worked out how to make lightweight protection from layers of folded cotton, causing the bullet to deform just before it reached flesh and blood, and causing the energy to be dissipated as it tried to force its way through the lower levels. When the Americans fought the Koreans quite soon afterwards, they captured one of these vests and took it home for analysis. It worked, and the idea quite quickly spread. Interestingly, Archduke Ferdinand of the Austro-Hungarian Empire was wearing one of these bulletproof vests when a nationalist Serbian assassin shot him in 1914. Unfortunately for the Archduke, the assassin had the good sense to shoot him in the neck, thus starting the First World War. By the 1920s, bulletproofing was positively hip in America, where organised criminals adopted these gangster vests to protect themselves against rival gangs and, of course, the feds. This led to a sort of arms race, with more powerful ammunition being developed to penetrate better bulletproof vests, leading ultimately to the development of the notorious Magnum round. Providing protection against relatively slow handgun bullets isn't such a problem. It's reckoned that since 1973, over 3,000 US police officers have been saved from serious gunshot wounds by ballistic vests. The problem is trying to provide protection against high-velocity rifle rounds and bits of shrapnel, as found on the battlefield. Fabric vests simply aren't good enough for this, so modern body armour incorporates metal or ceramic plates as well. So now, once again, we come up against the age-old problem of weight. A modern body armour vest can weigh as much as 15 kilograms. Or, if you remember, exactly the same weight that your medieval knight had to cart about.